Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Social Media Church Podcast. I'm Neil Smith, and joined with me, as always, is Jay Cranda. Welcome, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm uh, really excited to talk about texting because uh, I, I actually don't know why I'm excited. I'm just excited yeah. because we got this question in from our Facebook page from uh, Jason. And I'm sorry, Jason, in advance, I'm going to mispronounce your last name, DeGraff. Uh, sent us in a private message about texting. And so um, I'm excited to talk about this. It's great. It was, and before we jump into this, I do think, uh, Jay, that we do need to discuss one other situation that's going on in the world of social media. And that is, uh, I keep seeing the Spurs popping up in my news feed, and I don't seem to see the Lakers popping up in my news feed. Well, um, you, you kind of have, the Spurs are like a false promise like you guys are gonna like be in, get into the playoffs but you guys are gonna be like old men and just fall apart so it's i mean what's better better to get a better draft pick or to like get into the first round and go nowhere i don't know i i feel like the lakers are being more strategic at this point okay well yeah i'm, ju- I'm just saying i'm wearing my spurs championship shirt that i bought within the last year um <laughs> and, uh, i just want to make sure well uh, it's that, it's amazing it, it's amazing that you have one of the most dominant teams in the last decade and still uh, most people just think the Lakers are the best. It's just because you, you're in a small market. Nobody thinks that's why you're, you're going to lose players. And uh, really after Tim Duncan retires, it's, it's over. So I apologize in advance. Okay. okay. Well, you know, living in New York, we've got two large markets here in Brooklyn <laughs> and, and those teams, we, we see where that landed uh, them and the Lakers, but so let's move on to texting. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we we covered everything we needed to in this subject. Uh, So Jason asks, uh, do you know of any churches that are using text slash SMS messaging to their congregation slash guests? Uh, Do you have any uh, resources about this? Uh, So what, uh, Jay, I'm curious, do you guys use SMS or, or what are you doing? Yeah, we, we use it on and off. Um, I definitely know it's something that they primarily use in our student programs here at Saddleback Church. It's definitely something they use. To, they use it in two forms, to, to send out you know announcements and different things happening. And they also do a lot of game formats um, with texting in. And it's also a way they capture information. As a larger church, it's not something we rely off of. We've done two ways. We've done some standalone programs that, and that we've used for a different series. And we've also done it where um, we've um, um, built our own custom uh, systems. And so we haven't had a lot of success. And, and I know one of the questions he was asking was weather announcements, like, you know, um, you know, United States, we've been dealing with all the snow everywhere. Well, you know, obviously in California, we never get snowed in, we never have to cancel a service because of weather. So we really haven't been forced to use it in a way that's super, um, I would say helpful at this point. So, and uh, what we do at, at Community Bible Church in San Antonio, uh, we use a program called Send Hub, um, and, it, and it's pro, you know as far as I'm I'm aware, it's the most popular SMX uh, texting tool. Uh, it works pretty well. We only currently use it for our kids ministry and uh, some some announcements for parents, and and then we use SMS for um, and we just honestly we have a dedicated cell phone. So that we're kind of using like an old school oh, wow. structure that we use to, to update parents. So we still have the screens and services to let parents know this is your kid, but we find that to be distracting. So now we text them, you know, your kid needs to be picked up or, or this has happened and we can get a, a more clear message to them. I, I, you know, we just did that within a year. I don't know why it took so long for us it's, to even think about that. I, I used to, I, I have a part of my role here at Salawak Church is, to help out and oversee our extension programs, which, which an extension is just a small group that gets together and watches the service together somewhere outside of yeah. a regional or international campuses. And one of the things I, I do is that I have to capture attendance every week for all my extensions. And I have 61 of these, um, some very small, some big. And I used a program, Text Signal. It's uh, TXT uh, Signal. Uh, dot com and I could easily import it and it was super helpful um, it actually I used it for a little bit and I went away w- away from it because I didn't get great response from the individual so I actually started to just send emails and emails were a lot better so it's kind of funny because I definitely heavily rely off texting but even internally within my own volunteer systems it hasn't been like the w- if I'm gonna do texting I'm gonna still do two things so it's almost like if you're going to do texting, you got to, you got to still be in a couple different areas. Yeah. 
you know, it, it, and I, and I've heard stats that something like 94% of text messages and I made up that number, but I know it's in the 90th percentile of text messages are read where email is like 20% mm -hmm. of emails are read or, or and if you get 25% open rate, you're doing pretty well in an email list. And so obviously the announcements that are there are, are very valuable in getting to people. People though, just like our emails, you, you know, can get so annoyed so quickly. So we've got to be careful with SMS messaging. We use more than SMS though is push messages through our app. Mm. So we, we can actually, um, you know, uh, we get data when they sign up for our app. So we can send, you know, updates to people based on a, on a zip code or on some different uh, demographic information, which is really helpful for us. But a lot of people dis, uh, you know, or don't accept push messages. So it's, it's almost like pop-ups on a website or something. So, it's, you know, there's, there's give or take there. It's challenging, but from a direct communication standpoint, it is, it has value. Obviously people use it mm. uh, when you, when it comes to data in the church, we've got to be very careful for not over emailing, over texting. Uh, yeah. but it, is, it is a great tool. Uh, so and and, go and I, the only thing I would add to that Niels would be, you know, I, just make sure you have an overall communication strategy that there's going to be primary and secondary ways. And usually if it's a big announcement, you're going to be pushing through all your channels. And I think texting is definitely a helpful channel for it to be on. Make sure you have uh, protocols on how often you send texts out. You don't want, you know, you don't want to hand that off to a, a, a fellow staff member or even a volunteer that's going to start blasting and you're going to get blocked because that's, that's a lot of hassle. It's the same thing with email clients, you know, email clients, if, if your server gets blocked, um, it's a, it's, it's a big issue and you have to undo it with different, um, different email clients and it's not fun. And then I just be thinking about the length of the text. Um, a lot of people, they send out the link because they think everybody has an iPhone, which a lot of people have an iPhone or an Android device, but there's a lot of people too that have, um, character limits on how often. So you don't want a text to come in broken up. So I just think about it. Think about your overall communication strategy. Think about um, how often in, in the protocols of who's overseeing that and also be thinking about the length and um, don't be sending super long things. Texting, it's, it's, texting should be shorter than a tweet. It should just be a, a, a quick thing and it's kind of, a, it's a great way to get an alert. But I love, you know, probably we're, we're probably moving towards the app kind of notifications, probably, probably the, the more, the better use if you're invested already in that platform. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of churches don't have apps yet. And so I, I know that that's not uh, functional for everybody and, and getting into send hub or, or tech signal is obviously a great tool to get started uh, in that direct communication on the mobile device. So great. great thanks for your question, Jason. And, and we appreciate, uh, we get, we're getting so many messages via email, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and we appreciate those. We, we really want to want to stir that conversation. And we hope too, that as you see a conversation on, on Twitter, especially, don't hesitate to jump in. If you have an answer, uh, we, we want to create a community. We want to create a conversation among everybody, uh, ministry leaders. We don't want to be the only ones answering those questions. So use the hashtag uh, SMC podcast and uh, join the conversation, ask questions. So we do have a question of the day, uh, Jay, we're going to get to that. But first I want to highlight our sponsor of this episode. And so our sponsor is social media made easy. You can go to social media made easy TV and that website will be in our show notes uh, to learn practical steps to have a custom social media plan. And Jay, you created that resource, made it incredibly mm. affordable, both uh, for ministry leaders as well as business leaders or anyone uh, who has a social media presence. And really, uh, when I say anyone, I mean everyone, because we're all using social media in one way or another to communicate and engage an audience. Uh, so go to socialmediamadeeasy.tv and learn more about that resource. So let's get to uh, the question of the day. Uh, we're talking Google+. Plus. Uh, Jay, do you want to share where the question came from and, and what it is, what we can talk about? Yeah, so I, I was actually, I had read a story um, about um, an announcement of one of the Google events that they were talking about Google Plus, And there was a lot of reaction, both from articles on Mashable.com uh, and a couple other side sites about Google Plus is dead. And um, pretty much alluding towards the idea of the social element on Google Plus is, is coming to an end. And I, I tweeted out the article um, and um, I had this like buzz of activity around me, like people like attacking me. And I was like, I didn't realize I had so many friends that worked at Google. I didn't mean to like offend their, you know, everybody. And I had, you know, uh, Dustin uh, Stott. Um, and I, again, I'm going to apologize in advance for people. If I'm mispronouncing your last name, I'm, I got speech impediment. So, um, and uh, Marcus uh, Seiler, 
and uh, Daryl, uh, I can't, Daryl, I can't even say your name, but we were um, pretty much, they were all talking about how, and really Dustin and I started getting this conversation about like, he, he didn't think it was dead. It's, it's, it's not done. I mean, the activity is very high. And I think my main observation about Google Plus was, is that, you know, they were trying to be something that they just couldn't. And Google, regardless, it's Google, they might, they still might have 6 million active users, you know, in a month or so. But the problem is, you know, they want to be bigger than that. And so Google just has this tendency of starting things and killing things. And no matter what they kill, it still evolves into something better. So think about, uh, you know, uh, you know, Google Buzz or Google Wave, things that ended up being used for good ways and other ways, but ended up dying. And, and my thought was, man, I, I think Google Plus probably is going to go away and it will just turn into a place where videos and photos and there might be some connection. But w- what do you think about that? You know, I, I've really always questioned Google stats around Google Plus uh, mm. b- because I feel like they're, um, and I don't know where they're pulling the numbers because you'll hear Google Plus is the second largest social network in the world. Um, and and I'll, I'll read a book or, you know, I, I remember listening to Dustin's interview on the Social Media Church podcast yeah. and I was all in again. You know, I was like, oh, yeah. Google Plus, I'm missing yeah. it. Um, and, and I, and I follow Dustin pretty, pretty actively on social media Yeah. and, and he's, I mean, his content is so good, uh, on all the networks, but, but naturally he has found a way to, to niche into Google plus I have tried four or five different times and, and I just can't, I, I, I can't find an audience there. Uh, and, and I say an audience, not even to listen to, but to engage and connect with, yeah. I feel like I'll post something, no one, no one engages or I'll try to find and, and make connections. It's, it's just confusing to me. Um, yeah. And so, and, but I hate to say it's not just me. Uh, I, I think it's across the board from people that I talk to that are engaging on Google plus just struggle. It just seems like no, no one's there. And naturally Dustin's found people, but I think that's yeah. the exception, not the norm. Yeah. Um, and so I, I really have yet to see great value. And, and my recommendation when, as a consultant and as people ask me, is I would auto post to it. And I don't say that it's about any other social network, yeah. but I would post there for SEO purposes, search engine optimization, yeah. uh, because Google does find it and it, and it helps your Google uh, status uh, in search engines. But other than that, building an audience and a social engagement platform, um, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't see the yeah. value. It's, it's, and it is, it is a little unfortunate because um, it is very sleek. It's very clean. There's a lot of great things. I remember when it first came out, the app was amazing. Um, the mobile app that came with it, it kind of launched, you know, the products that came out of that were great. You know, obviously Google Hangouts are valuable and still um, used. And so I, I think the hard part is, and this is where Dustin and I were arguing about it. I was like, I, I didn't know, when I'm critiquing something, um, it's, I'm not invested into it. So it's easy for me to critique it. And I was cracking up with Dustin over, I was like, D- did I offend your mother? Like, I didn't mean to like, I didn't mean to like go against anything here, but I, I, I just was being honest. Like none of my friends use it. Um, and literally the people that do use it are like Android freaks. They're like the yes. opposite of Apple freaks. And so even with Apple freaks, I'm not that way. I'm like, Hey, I love Apple and I have Apple devices, but I'm not like a diehard. Like, if something comes better, like I'm going to move on. I'm, I don't bleed Apple. You know what I mean? And so like with Google, it's the same way. If I don't use it, if it's not helpful, I'm not going to use it. And so SEO reasons, of course, you know, Hootsuite, if you're scheduling posts, it's really easy just to check a box and have it go and you don't even have to check it out. Right. I, I still think about how, you know, header images look on any pages I, I interact with. I still make sure content is up to date on those channels, but I just don't have a natural gathering of my friends or any of the communities I interact with on that channel. And that's the reason why I don't regularly go there. And so it's something that I'm aware of and I go to, and I think no matter what Google plus will have a place because some of these products will, will evolve and turn into. But if you think of it as a social platform, I, I feel like that part is going to go away and it will turn into like a video hangout kind of primary feature. Google Photos has the potential always to dominate and take over things like Flickr and other avenues. And and then, you know, um, anything else in there, like it's just like, like who uses the Google Plus share button on stuff? Like, <laughs> like I, right. I, I mean, you put it there because you're like, you want to be nice, <laughs> but right. like, how, how useful is it? And I don't, Dustin, I get it. Maybe we should have an extended argument about this, but um, I just don't see it. And um, I, I think Google though will take it and we'll learn and something better will come out of it. 
Yeah. You know, and, and, and really uh, Dustin's got a great blog, you know, if you want to read his stuff yeah. about Google plus, I mean, if you really are interested in digging into it, it is working for Dustin and, and a handful of other people uh, that, that you can find some information. I read a book a couple of years ago called what the plus by Guy Kawasaki. And he's out there on your, your coast yeah. at Jay, if you know him at all. And he, I mean, he, he's such a sharp guy. I read all of his stuff yeah. uh, and really respect his opinion. And so I was like, man, if it's good enough for Guy, it's good enough for me. And I dove in for about six months and still just couldn't get traction. Like, like he couldn't, I followed kind of the, you know, the, the prescription that he created in his book. And um, I just couldn't get the traction, you know, but there's opportunities there. There's always opportunities there. If you really are niche and you can find um, those opinions, you know, the, the expert probably that I follow the closest and I, and I hate to even recommend him on this podcast because I know it's going to offend people if they go to his stuff, but it's uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and he's a New York guy here uh, and, you know, crush it is probably the book that most inspired me initially around social media to say, this is going to be the killer. You know, this is where things are going, you know, and I was all in after reading crush it. Uh, and I've, I re- listen to his, his podcast daily. Um, so good stuff. He he predicts, and he doesn't make a ton of predictions like this, but he predicts that Google will shut down Google Plus this year. Um, and so that him saying that was pretty caught my wow. attention. Uh, and, and and I think realistically, it won't all shut down. They, they've made an announcement recently that they're splitting certain features. Yeah. Um, but but it, it clearly isn't getting traction. Google has plenty of other wins under their belt in other areas. And so focus on what you're great at. And Google plus does not seem to be that. So for church yeah. leaders, my recommendation is focus on Facebook, focus on Twitter, Instagram, where you see people in your, your community, your area engaging uh, and connecting. And um, that's, that's where I'd, I'd focus. Yeah. On. And, and, you know, post there and, and interact. It's very easy just to throw content up there. And again, you know, um, you know, check out Dustin's, a site, you know, read up on his, you know, part of it is we're just sharing our honest opinion of what works in our ministry in our context. And so if something works in your context, um, and, and I think that's the beauty is every channel, you know, there's things that are normative here in, you know, California or New York, and you, you might learn that, you know, different places, you know, I remember originally Google Plus would have a potential internationally in some places because there's some better open doors that, that the Google platform was going to allow. And I think those things might have potential, but I love Google for their honesty. And I love Google for their, uh, just their entrepreneurial, like just to the extreme. And so um, I think it's very helpful. Um, what I do, what we should talk about in, in, in another uh, episode coming up is um, uh, SEO and talking yeah. about, um, you know, there's so many talks about SEO, how it's changing, evolving. Some people say that might go away, um, which is, there's no way, but you know, there's ways that that can be affected. And so, but I want to thank mm-hmm. everybody yeah. for, um, uh, listening to this episode of the social media podcast um, and for new uh, information about the podcast and stay up to date, please visit socialmedia.church and use the hashtag SMC podcast. Thanks for being with us.